Hello and welcome back to Pico in what is our 75th anniversary year. It's great to see you again. Since we showed you around last year, a lot's been happening and we've had to make a few changes. That's mainly because we've been so busy, because you guys have been busy building model railways too. During this video, I'll take you around the factory and you'll be able to see all the different areas where we're working and see how we're coping with the new demand that we're facing. We'll meet the people behind the scenes, including Tim Vincent, who will help us understand the new processes we're using for making flexible track. It's the 60th anniversary of Pico Streamline as well as our 75th anniversary, so we've got a lot to celebrate and it's great to be able to show you our new piece of kit as we move into the future with our track development. Anyway, let's get going. Let's go down to the factory and see how things are going down there. Well, when you think of Pico, you think of track. And as you can imagine, we make a lot of track here in beer. Now I'm standing in front of the new auto track machine, which seems to be producing SL100 at the moment. Tim, how's it going with the new machine? Yeah, the machine's good. Um, it's been a real asset to us. Um, if you think that what we're doing is we're producing, we need um, at least 900 cartons of this track a month, which is 22,000 or 22 and a half thousand pieces every month. So, you know, this machine gives us the capability to be able to run lunches, evenings, if, if we so wish. So, so it, it gives us that flexibility. We have designed and developed this machine with aspects of a tried and tested rail delivery process, combined with 30 years experience of more labor intensive track making operation. The project brief was to create a semi-autonomous machine that can match the current productivity by using just one member of the team. Bespoke automation always presents challenges, but after some intensive intervention from our in-house engineering department, we are now producing track products 60% more efficient. That adds a welcome boost to our track making capability. Okay, so that was track production. Now we're gonna have a look at some rail parts being made for one of our new turnouts. There are many parts needed for a turnout. These rail parts will form part of the frog of the new number six turnout and will be molded in place before the final assembly process. It's an exacting process that needs good dexterity and accuracy from the molding and assembly teams. The new turnouts will come into stock this autumn. Right, let's have a look at the wagon line and see how things are going with the new Linton Advanceable brake vans. So, we are now producing the first batch of the new 009 Linton Advanceable goods brake van models. Here Sarah is assembling all of the parts after they've been decorated a fiddly task that requires all of the concentration. And yes, we test each model on a piece of track too. There will be three livery versions on their way, starting with this early grey Linton Advanceable version. Other Southern Railway liveries are coming soon after. Whilst we're here, we can take a look at the process that we use to print liveries on our rolling stock. Back in the old days, we would use a long-winded process known as Tampo pad printing but these days we have a very modern digital printing facility using the latest high-tech digital printers and all of the fine detail can be applied in one go as seen here as we print the Feist Bananas livery on some of our N-Gage box fans. Talking of technology, I think it's worth mentioning that we've actually invested quite heavily here at Pico over the years in many areas of our operations. I think now we ought to go and meet Paul Hitchcock, our innovations manager, and he can tell us a little bit more about what's going on in that most secret of places, the Pico Tool Room. Right, now here we are in a place we've never been to before. We're in the hub of the Pico Tool Room, and I'm here with Pico innovations manager, Paul Hitchcock, who's going to help us understand a little bit about the new items that we're producing at the moment. So Paul, everybody's waiting for Ballhead 00 at the moment, and we've got our first pre-production samples here. What tool have we got here in front of us? So we're looking at the centre section for the single slip and double slip of the uh, bullhead turnouts. So if you take this um, item, this is a single slip. This is this section of, of the tool. Um, and this is the moulding that's come off that tool. So we have a, a moving half and a fixed half. So if uh, for the layman, we put these two together we squirt um, melted plastic into them it cools down and then it, it gets ejected out and that's where you end up with the product the bull head um, single slip double slip and crossing are all done in this method we have a separate molding for the frog and, and individual moldings for the center section but the common part of these double slips and crossing single slip is the frog unit is also used 
on the medium radius turnout as well, which is, is this one. And all of these items are ready for production effectively, aren't they? Yes, they are, yes. All the, um, uh, this, this is just looking at the mould tools, but the actual press tools that make all the rail parts to go in here with all the, the blades and everything, that's all ready for production as well. So we're all set to go, we've just got to find the time to do it. Yes. So moving across the bench now to Engage, it looks like in front of me here we've got uh, one of the new Engage wagon tools. What exactly are we looking at here, Paul? Uh, Steve, we're, lo we're looking at the mineral wagon, new Engage mineral wagon. Our um, existing Engage tooling is quite old and we're actually looking to uh, replace it all with the, the, the latest um, methods and also the latest detail really. So this is, this is quite intricate in, in a way, four draw tooling um, is required, I don't know if you can see this, but there's detail on each side and end of this product. If you imagine a mold tool closed up and plastic squirted in together, if you don't separate out that detail, you can't get it out of the tool. So you've got um, side um, inserts, end inserts, and a center insert on this one. There is another insert that's missing. So it's, it, there's six parts that go to any of these um, Engage wagons, and each one has got its own detail in, specific to the, the, the different designs of the wagons. Really. So we've got a whole series of Engage wagons coming out over the coming months. So this is just one of the tools. Um, there's going to be a lot of interesting models coming out next year then. Uh, it should be, yeah. yeah. Right, so now we're looking at a whole range of different 009 rolling stock tools. We've got the Festignog Railway Quarryman coaches. They're under development and coming along nicely. And obviously the Snail Beach Railway hopper wagon tools. So Paul, explain to me a little bit about what the tools are here in front of us. Yeah, sure. Well, on the Quarrymans, you've got varying uh, single draw tools. So these aren't four draw, these are just single impressions with varying types of um, parts. With, um, as if you can see here is the back pipes that go on the, the bottom of the wagons. Again, that's, that's the other half of it. And all those dotted around the side, there's, there's um, this roof on here. Um, for the, there's two varieties of roof for the different wagons. But you've also got four draw tooling here, which is to make the body again. And this same principle applies because of the detail inside you need to have um, all these items pull away out of the mold tool to actually get them to eject. And as you can see here, we've got six items. So that, that is a moving half, which was missing from the previous one. So that starts by sitting on there. So this is a snail beach um, chassis that, um, inserts we're looking at. So that um, makes these parts. There's a lot of detail on these, as you can see. So the, the, this is quite an intricate insert. Um, that produces all that detail in on the underneath. Um, again, it's four draw because of the, all the detail. All these parts have to separate out to be able to eject it out of the mold tool. Fantastic! Just goes to show how complex the process is to make what appears to people to be very simple plastic mouldings, and very expensive, I should add as well. Even even more important that we have um, the the wheels rolling in this. So if we don't get the um, flash free then the wheels won't rotate so you, you won't be able to. A wagon's not a wagon if the wheels aren't rolling. Correct. And um, yeah quite amazing and uh, yeah looking forward to seeing all of these coming out very shortly. So Paul we're in front of the uh, spark eroding machine here and that suspiciously looks like a lens double slip tool to me is that right? That's correct. This is the centre section of the, the new lens double slip. Uh, we're sparking the uh, gate areas at the moment, which is these parts here. Um, the plastic uh, comes in through, through the, the runners, goes down through these little holes and then fills into the cavities. Um, this, this is an electrical discharge machine. We use um, uh, dielectric fluid. Um, so when this is spark eroding, the, it, it will be submerged in this fluid. This is the electrode that we're using to create the gates on the tool. And we make, we make and do all the design ourselves. So this, this actual insert for a bolster, that tool, the, the product was designed here, uh, approved by Lentz, and now we've uh, designed the tool, and now we're making the tool actually on site. 
And it's worth pointing out as well, this is hardened steel, isn't it? This is. This is, this is um, about 50 Rockwell. So a very tough material to work with. It'll last a long time. They're very resilient. The only thing we'll have left to do on this after um, doing this, this last operation on this machine is we need to put the wood grain on these sleepers, which we do on our laser machine at Buckfast Sleep. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you, Paul. OK, so that's the tool room. We don't often let people have a look inside here, so consider it a special privilege. Anyway, where next? Do you remember where we were at the beginning? That's right, I was outside the PlayStation indoor play area, now repurposed as a new factory unit. Let's go and have a look. Well, here we are in Unit 2. This is the former PlayStation. And as you can see behind me and looking around, there's a lot of work going on in here. We've had a new floor put in the building. And uh, it's fair to say that this is probably going to be the, the factory unit with the best view in the company. Now, I'm here with Tim Vincent, our production manager, who's going to perhaps give us a little bit of an insight as to what's going to happen in here. Tim, um, there's an awful lot going on in here. There's some new benches and some new areas for working. What's going to happen in here? Yeah, you're right, Steve. So, so as you can see, we're we're sort of the guys here are are sort of making good good inroads to um, creating and, and finishing this um, unit two, as we call it. We have aspirations to move it in here by mid October. So again, what we're what we're looking to achieve from this is we're going to be hopefully giving us that extra boost that we need for production um, as it as it has as you know we've been 40 percent out of stock so this will boost um, our production we will probably see about two-thirds of the production unit the overall in this building alone and so it should house about 30 people hopefully in the end so it's gonna be a busy place it will be indeed yes yes and all these different benches these all have the different production areas for turnout production yeah absolutely so we've again through the building we've like i say we've increased the capacity and or machinery by at least 20 percent which will which again will give a significant boost for the for the business uh, we've got the point line assembly up here we have, point, uh, we have packing and we have the welding stations as well as the joiner fitting machines as well. And then downstairs it's the large scale the production area, is that? It is, yeah. We've got the large scale production area but we've also got our UV printers, flatbed printers towards the back with our supervisors downstairs as well. Yeah. Well, I think it's fair to say this will be a great asset to the business and certainly it will help us keep our production up to levels that we need to. An exciting time for the business and uh, we're looking forward to seeing this fully operational. Now let's have a look at other parts of the factory and see what's happening there. Where possible, we like to make use of new technology. And one area that's interested us a lot is laser cutting techniques. Follow me and I'll show you what I mean. It's a bit noisy in there, so I'm standing outside in the corridor. This is outside the room housing our laser cutting machine. It's an amazing process to watch. Let's go and have a look. We have been using wood in some kits over the past couple of years, and they seem to be proving popular. This method is ideal for us if the sales volumes are relatively low and allows us to produce some more specialized or regionally based kits that otherwise might be unviable if we decided to produce them in plastic. We use the laser to cut out some very intricate parts from the sheets of thin plywood and as you can see here, the process is incredibly hypnotising to watch. The end result is a beautifully detailed model, such as the Highland Railway Signal Box kit being produced here. There are going to be other complementary kits following through, so look out for these during 2022. So, that's how we make wooden kits, but our traditional background is in producing high quality kits in plastic. Our facility at Buckfastley in South Devon specialises in producing moulded plastic kits, so now's a good time to head down there to see this busy operation. So, Ratio Plastic Kits and Wheels Kits were two businesses acquired by Pico back in the 1990s, and the production of these two famous ranges were brought together under the same roof at the then new facility at Buckfastley, which is where we're here today. Since then, the team here has efficiently been turning out thousands of plastic kits every year to meet the insatiable demand from modellers and in recent times we have invested heavily in the facility by acquiring new moulding machines as we modernise the operation. In 2018, Pico acquired Parkside models and transferred the production of the 00 and O scale wagon kits to Ratio from Scotland. And now we can honestly say that our Buckfarsi factory is a real centre of excellence when it comes to plastic injection moulded kits, alongside our main facility at Beer. 
The latest kit in the ratio range will be this N scale ARP signal box kit. And as you can see here, the tool is almost ready to go. Another high quality item for this important range of plastic kits. Almost ready too is the wheels material sheet for the French lozenge roof tile. This range of modeling sheets for the HO and OO scale modeler has always been popular. So it's great to be adding some new ones and especially nice to do something for our customers on the continent. These roof tile sheets fill an important gap in the range as well as providing essential protection from the rain, of course. Okay, back in beer now. Pico Tools is a more recent range of products that we have introduced. Our two main tool sets are now well established and selling well. And soon they'll be joined by our new Flexi Loco Lift. This replaces the previous SL43 Loco Lift, now discontinued. But the great thing about this replacement is that you will now have something that can be adjusted for many different gauges. From N up to 009 and 00, HO and EM and a few gauges in between in fact. David here is demonstrating with a pre-production sample set up for 00 and HO, but notice how easy it will be to stack one on top of the other, great for storage. You'll be able to use multiple sets to create even longer lifts. We'll feature this further in a separate video, but look out for this new accessory in the shops this autumn. Okay, let's round off with a quick catch up on other product developments. So that exciting piece of news will probably need a video of all its own, so look out for that later on this year. Anyway, if you've enjoyed watching this program and you'd like to learn more about Pico and its 75th anniversary, then pick up the Railway Model October issue, which includes this 16-page supplement. It's full of news and stories and articles from behind the scenes, written by people that make things happen here. It's a great read, worth having a look at. If you can't pick one up from your local shop, then contact us direct and we'll be able to supply a copy to you. But that's it, that's the end of the program. We hope you've enjoyed it. Looking forward to 2022, hopefully things will be a lot happier and a lot more healthier for us all. We've got great plans to catch up with all our product developments and to also bring you some exciting new developments, so stay tuned. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and share the news amongst your friends. It'd be great to keep you informed for the rest of this year and into next year and beyond. But anyway, look after yourselves. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye now.